for part C, we've got a lot to be going on with, so let's get to it. Um, they want us to create a confidence interval. Um, again, there's a couple ways we can do this, but I'm going to do it by hand the long way first. So the first thing to note is the confidence level. Um, the confidence level here was 0 0.90. That means alpha, which is the area in both tails, is 1 minus that, right, the complement. Um, this is all you would do for the T ones that we did in 9.2, but in 9.3, let me show you, we're back to Z's, see? And so for Z's, you need alpha over 2, so let me find that. Oopsie, if I could type it incorrectly, equals that cell divided by 2. <sighs> now, um, if you want, you can find the complement of that, 1 minus alpha over 2. You can do it that way, or you could just do um, it in the formula itself, you know, whatever. You, you basically need the 0.95. Alright, so the critical z value would be equal to z norm s inverse of that guy right there. Again, I've done it several times where I just typed 1 minus inside here. Let me show you. Do, 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 move over so they can see. There we go. So you could type B18 or you could have done 1 minus B17. That would have worked too, right? Same thing. All right, now we've got all the components. Now we really have to get to the hard stuff, which is finding this formula. And this formula is not a fun one to type, I have to say. I mean, it's fun for me, but I don't think it's fun for you guys. All right, so it's P hat minus Z alpha over 2, square root of all that crap. So let's do it. P hat was way up here. I found it in part A. So that's P hat minus Z alpha over 2. That's the sky around right now. Times, don't forget your times, square root, left parentheses, P hat, which is again this cell, times 1 minus, oops, parentheses, oof, bad, 1 minus P hat again. Close that parentheses divided by n, which is way back up here at the top. Close. Did you catch all that? Let me show you again here. Let me, let me click on the cell so you can see. All right, so it's p hat, which is cell b6, minus z, which is b19, there it is in green, times the square root of b6 times 1 minus b6 in parentheses, that's 1 minus p hat right there, divided by n, and then you close the back parentheses. Enter. Now we get to do it all again. P hat plus Z times the square root and then one, oopsie, then P hat times, don't forget that times dot or it'll be wrong, one minus that P hat again close that parentheses, divided by n, which is that guy right there. Whew, what a lot of work. All right, now, was this the only way to do it? Oh, of course not. There are lots of ways to do it. Um, one way to do it, another way, would be stat crunch. So let me go back here and show you stat crunch. Um, you go to stat, you go to proportions, one sample, because chapter 9 and 10 are one sample. We have summary, so let me click that. Um, our number of successes was 47. Our observations was 863. Next. Our confidence interval was 0. Point, oh, I can't remember what it was. I think it was 0 0.90, but let me double check that. Yep, 0 0.90, so let me go back there. 0 0.90. Just do a standard, that's fine. Click Calculate, and there it is. Copy. Um, let me paste it right here. You can see, aha, look there, lower limit, upper limit. Same answers as here, doing it longhand. Again, there are reasons to do it both ways. I just want you to see both ways. Um, as I, far as I recall, DDXL doesn't do this very well, so I think we're okay with just using stat crunch as our backup. All right, that's the end of that section. Let's see what else we need to do interpret the confidence interval. All right, well, I'll talk about that next time along with the next problem.